When the Toyota RAV4 first appeared on our roads in the early 90s, it was quite a fun and cheeky looking SUV. Over subsequent generations, it's grown in every dimension to what you see here in this latest version. It's a much larger car, partly to do with the fact that it needs to make room in the range for the other models, such as the CHR, which really is actually now back to what the RAV4 size originally was. It's also much more angular now, and this is really in keeping with Toyota's real change in design. They're now making really attractive looking cars. And in this sport black edition, well, it looks like something Darth Vader might take the kids to school in. From a family perspective, the RAV4 is quite a big car. It's got lots of room in the front and in the back seats, but also it doesn't skimp when it comes to boot space. This particular model is equipped with an electrically operated tailgate and you get quite a nice low load height. So that makes it really practical for getting heavier items, whether it's buggies, prams, bicycles, or just your general luggage. So that's quite nice. And overall you get 542 liters of boot space, but that can also be increased when you drop down the rear seats. They have a 60-40 split fold as well. Just one engine is available. It is a 2.5 liter petrol engine that's naturally aspirated and has a power output of 218 horsepower and 221 newton meters of torque. That's also mated to a hybrid system, which on the Luna and Sol models uses a slightly older nickel methyl hydride battery, whereas the Sport, Sport Black Edition and Platinum models get a more advanced lithium ion unit. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the doors do open to a fairly generous angle. So that does make it a little bit easier for getting in and out, especially if you need to put little ones into the child seats. There are isofix points on both of the outer seats here. And usefully, you can also adjust the angle of the seat back on both of these seats, which have a 60-40 split. Now, what is it like when you get inside? Well, I have loads of room in here absolutely zero cause for complaint for me give you an idea i'm five foot nine and i have well no issue with headroom in fact with this driving seat set up for my driving position i can just about touch the seat in front and because of how that's shaped there's no issue when it comes to knee room or leg room and i can get both my feet in under the seat so it's very easy for me to stretch out in the back here there is also a very small lip here, just over what where we would normally find a transmission tunnel in the car. So even the person sitting in the middle seat isn't gonna to be too hard done by. And there's two more USB-A ports here in the back as well. So those sitting back here can keep their devices charged up when they're on the move. You don't get any storage pockets on the back of the driver's seat, but you do get them on the passenger seat, so that's kind of handy. And if you don't need to use the middle seat, you can pull down this armrest, which has two decent sized cup holders there as well. Other features, well, you've got really nice big windows and they don't come up too high. So if there are smaller kids sitting in the back here, they should still be able to get a good view out of the outside world. And it does also help having a little bit more light coming into what is already quite a dark cabin but it doesn't feel dark so even though there's a lot of dark materials it does still seem pretty roomy inside now first thing you'll find is it's very easy to get into the RAV4 it's got quite a good door aperture here and the seats aren't too high up in terms of any side bolsters so that's good it has a good bit of comfort and the driver's seat on this car is also electrically adjustable and there is quite a lot of movement. You can adjust it in really tiny amounts. So if you want to get it exactly where you want it, it's very easy to do that. And there's also a manually adjustable steering wheel, which is for reach and rake. And well, there's quite a good bit of scope for adjustment there too. So most people of various heights and sizes won't find any issue getting into a comfortable driving position in the RAV4. Just like the exterior, there's a real chunky look and feel to the interior of the RAV4, but there's also a real step up in terms of quality. The materials that are used, you get this really nice gray stitching across the dashboard. There's little hints of silver plastic, a little bit of a metallic look to it, but it all feels really good, really solid. Everything you touch, even like, for example, when you go and pull the door closed, it's got a rubberized feel to it. That rubberized material includes 
the knobs here for adjusting the climate control and even slightly smaller versions of those for the volume control. Probably the only gripe I'd have is that the volume button is at the further end of this large freestanding touchscreen, but you can adjust it off the steering wheel here. And even though there's quite a few buttons on it, they all sit flush, um, although they're still very easy to use and navigate and they have a good feel to them as well. Everything feels quite, well, solid actually. That's the one thing that we haven't always experienced in Toyotas, but nowadays it's a much more robust and upmarket feel. And it needs to be because there's so much competition in this segment now. The center console, well, there's quite a good bit of space here. You've got a 12 volt socket in there and a USB-A port, which thankfully now, when you connect your phone, you can have Apple CarPlay on uh, Toyota. It's something that's been missing for years. So it's great to finally have that. You've got a, a good solid feeling gear selector there and you've got three different driving modes with the RAV4. You have Eco, Normal and Sport. The Sport obviously does what you expect it to do. It gives you a little bit more power. There is also an EV mode, which you can utilize a little bit more uh, with this version because this car is equipped with the lithium ion battery. But to be fair, it actually spends a lot of time uh, going into electric mode. And I'll touch a little bit more on that when we get out and get driving. There's two decent sized cup holders here. This armrest is nice and comfy and you can lift it up. You've got two more USB ports in there and a generous enough door bin. The display in front of you, well, it's a partly digital affair and it gives you a digital speedo here. Uh, you have then on the right hand side, you have your fuel gauge and engine temperature. And then on the left, you have a power gauge. So what this does is, as you're driving along, it has two bands for eco and two bands for power. And it just gives you an idea of how much uh, energy you're using in the car. And it does also dip in and show you when the car is charging as well. So the whole time when you're coasting downhill, for example, it will try and harvest some of its kinetic energy back into energy for the battery that will allow it for, to drive electrically for very small bits. Just before we get out on the road, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because then you'll know the next time we upload one of our videos. For all its sharp lines and angles on the exterior, the RAV4 does provide a fair degree of comfort and softness on the move, although it is a little bit on the firmer side with these 19 inch wheels that this Sport Black Edition has. But nevertheless, this is a car that is very smooth the hybrid system is what makes that so smooth and toyota has a vast wealth of experience when it comes to making hybrids work efficiently and smoothly and this does both of those very very well it is well it doesn't have a huge amount of power given that it's a 2.5 liter engine but this is a car that's not about power it is all about economy and it does very good in that respect throughout all this week no matter what way i drove it even in sport mode it never went above six liters per hundred kilometers and after a couple of hundred k's racked up it is actually showing a average of 5.7 liters per hundred kilometers which is actually just slightly below what toyota even claims for this car in this specification now that's obviously over a mixture of motorway town and uh, dual carriageway work. Now it's not the fastest at getting up to speed, but once it does, it's actually quite comfortable and does cruise along quite nicely. As you slow down as well, it will often switch into its EV mode. And with this version of car, you also get a slightly better lithium ion battery. It will drive at up to 80 kilometers an hour, even a little bit more using only the battery, but it is still worth remembering that it is just a small battery that is only refilled from harvested energy from uh, when the car is coasting or slowing down as a result of using the petrol engine. But that all helps. It does all help bring down the fuel economy. It helps lower the consumption slightly. And even when you're driving along, when it does switch to EV mode, really probably the only way you're going to notice is that you get a small green symbol appears on the dashboard display. Another feature a lot of people are probably going to like is that you do sit relatively high in this car as well. So it does give you a good view of the road. You feel like you're in a commanding position and that is what a lot of people like 
from SUVs, but also it has quite a slim A pillar. So when you're pulling out of a junction, for example, it's much easier to see everything around. You've less chance of a cyclist, for example, getting caught in your blind spot. And you get quite large door mirrors as well. And there's even a gap between the mirror and the A pillar. So your visibility throughout is very good. Even the rear view mirror is actually quite good, presuming that there's nobody sitting in the back. Um, and when you do need to park, there's also quite a good reversing camera as well. The ride quality for the most part is quite good. It does round off bumps pretty well. Uh, it's just on more uneven or less polished surfaces, it can get a little bit noisy. You get a little bit more road noise coming in, but over speed humps actually does it all quite well. So it's very comfortable in that respect. And these seats have a fair degree of support in it. They're actually quite comfortable if you do need to spend a little bit more time on a longer journey in the car. But it's around town at slower speeds in urban environments where the RAV4 really does just excel. That smoothness of interchange between the petrol engine and the hybrid electric motor just makes it a really comfortable and refined car. It's not a car that you're gonna feel really stressed out driving in traffic. It's just quiet, comfortable. It's what you're gonna want in a car like this. We are all moving towards a fully electric future, but it's also worth remembering that not everybody can get a charge point installed where they live. So that's where cars like this really do come into their own. Yes, it will do a very short amount of electric driving, but really this is a much better alternative to having a diesel SUV, especially if you're only doing short urban journeys. So if you're maybe just dropping the kids off at school or you live locally and work locally, then this makes a lot more sense. It's much nicer to use. It's very, very smooth. And it also is quite economical. Throughout the whole week, this car never went above six liters per 100 kilometers, no matter what way we drove it. So it is in that respect, one of the closest in terms of what a manufacturer claims is fuel consumption to what you actually get in the real world. So that's another positive. It's huge inside and it does look good depending on what your tastes are. Maybe not this sport black edition is gonna to be to everyone's liking, but there are plenty of other models available too. If you wanna know more about the RAV4, head over to our website. It's completecar.ie. You'll find it linked in the description below and you'll find detailed reviews of this and all of its rivals there. And it does have quite a few rivals. I've been Dave Humphreys. I'm road test seller with Complete Car. Thanks for watching.